In Kenya, where I were, I went uh, to help lay some water pipes, a couple of miles of water pipes, to bring water from a from a well to a waterless village. People were, were having to walk, th you know, two to three to four hours every day. Women, children, and, and even the men. Uh, this is time they were not going to school. They're not going to be able to do productive work. I mean, this is a, this you can't even imagine how much of a handicap it is uh, if you have to lug eight. Remember, water eight and a half pounds per gallon, and you're going to need at least five gallons minimum, you know, for each person. That's 40 pounds, just carrying that two to three miles a day for one person, much less your whole family. Just think about it. One of the problems, of course, of climate change um, is going to become dislocations from these water shocks, like these floods and mudslides and the droughts. These have already driven millions of people from their homes in India, Bangladesh, Syria, and Iraq, and of course in Yemen, and they are crowding often into cities that also can't really support them. These are expected to create 150 million what we call climate, what people call climate change refugees. I really call them water refugees uh, within about only a decade. And this is a category that did not even exist under, or does not even exist under the UN uh, um, nomenclatures. Uh, as water runs scarce and population surge, the pressure is growing in the world's 263 shared river basins and the countless shared groundwater uh, basins uh, to keep coming up with positive sum incentives to cooperate rather than to fight over the water resources. And the upriver states really have the least incentive to cooperate um, in these cases because they do control the on-off switch. And uh, the ones, they, they really do need to be engaged. The ones that uh, Turkey, for example, needs to especially be engaged, it is the Middle East's new water superpower, both because it has lots of you know, other various water uh, resources internally, but also the, both the, the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates um, start there. And they dictate the flows that go down to Syria and Iraq. Iraq very much used to be the way that um, e um, uh, Egypt is today, a downriver state that controlled 70, 70 80% of the water. Well, that's completely reversed. They only get something like 15% of the water today. These countries have built on their, uh, they've built dams and have hydropower plants and other water projects that are going to consume 150% of the water of the Euphrates River if they were all enacted. That's obviously impossible. And it's right now the upriver state, Turkey, who decides how much gets to go downstream. Uh, China controls Tibet. The Tibetan Plateau is the source of all of these great water resources of, of Southeast Asia, one of the very poorest and most overcrowded uh, water stress parts of the world. And they are building dams and uh, on those, on those uh, in that plateau on many of those rivers, including the Mekong, uh, because they need, they, they need it for their internal, their very rapid internal growth uh, that they, they believe they need to maintain. They have not yet, they don't really cooperate with the people downstream. And we are going to be hearing, and I, I guarantee you, in the next number of years about problems downstream uh, and, and a lot of blame being put on China uh, for diverting uh, water resources. In fact, uh, that's already started. Now, Turkey, alarmingly, Turkey and China are two of three states who voted against, only two, three states voted against the 1997 UN convention that said upriver states should behave in such a way that don't harm downriver states. Seems a fairly innocuous uh, thing, but China and Turkey voted against that, um, that convention. Uh, the third, if you're curious, is Burundi on the Nile, but I don't think they can achieve their aspirations uh, there. Um, now, for water from China, really critical. China has one-fifth the amount of water resources per person than we do in the United States. Water is Chinese, China's Achilles heel.